Aaron Tuttle here. It's storm season in Oklahoma, and with that comes torrential rain, high winds, and hail. To protect your home and your family from these threats, the one roofing company you should trust is Ferguson Roof Systems. They've been providing the best in roofing services for nearly half a century. Ferguson is Oklahoma's full service roofing company, certified with an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating and a five-star rating on Google. And with Ferguson now offering class four impact resistant shingles, now is the time to trust them with your home's roof. Get started today at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again. It is time for a weather update. Um, so I hope you, our guys are getting ready for some more rain because we've got that coming on in. Uh, this is uh, just about 10 minutes till noon. So it'll be about a quick eight or so minutes uh, weather update. And we'll turn you loose. You can enjoy lunch for the rest of the day. So thanks for coming on by. Make sure you like and share this video. Tell your friends and family about AT's weather. Always hit the like button because that tells the algorithms that everybody needs to get some more of AT. And we definitely need that, right? Uh, temperatures outside, we're 67 degrees here in my thermometer. So it's gonna be a nice, cool, rainy day it looks like here, at least on the north side of town. That, that uh, rainfall does say moderate because if you look outside, it's cloudy with a lot of rainfall coming through Oklahoma City Metro as a new line of storms moves in from the west. By the way, um, before I go any further, let me click the link here uh, on Facebook. If you're having trouble getting notified when I do go live, tap that little link I just sent on the opt-in weather updates and I'll send it to you directly from my Facebook Messenger to yours whenever I do go live so you don't miss a single update. So it kind of work around for the algorithms. All right, let's go back to the radar here. So currently we do have some showers and some thunderstorms rolling through central Oklahoma. We'll start up to the north here from Newkirk, Ponca City, Perry, Enid, just some heavy rainfall, Guthrie, nothing severe in this stuff. Back through Edmond, Oklahoma City, El Reno, Binger, Carnegie, Apache, and uh, Snyder. So again, this activity is moving from west to east. So this will continue to move through our um, lunchtime period and lingering for a couple hours for at least, you know, for some of the heavier rain. And then we'll focus some new rain down in the south. Notice this little green circle up here around Custer County. That was for a flash flood warning earlier just because they've had so much rain in that area. I want to show you that here in just two sh two seconds. Uh, but we've had some much needed rainfall across state, which was good. In some cases, a little too much. So see, when you fo focus out here in the west central Oklahoma, um, around between Thomas and Weatherford, Clinton, Butler, Hammond, we're up around five, six, seven, eight inches of rain in that area, which is why the flash flood warning was issued. This is all radar estimates. I did find a rain gauge here south of Custer uh, City, um, right here, Custer City, which had about six inches. Uh, actually, no, it was at seven inches, I believe it was. So actually, this kind of verified pretty good This is uh, for this radar estimation, which gives me a little bit more confidence in the outcome otherwise because that's a lot of rain man over seven inches and that's definitely caused some problems down south southwestern oklahoma also a lot of these areas down here anywhere from four to three there's uh right along the border five to close to six inches of rainfall uh from southeast uh, altus to snyder and points southward uh, otherwise some good rain around duncan and lawton last night east side of course not very much once you get east of i-35 uh, back up here toward Woodward, also some good rain. So hopefully, if you didn't get the rain, you'll get some more today. If you've had enough, hopefully it'll tune, turn off for you. All right, well, let's see what's going to happen elsewhere. Well, we did have some winds to speak of, uh, in case you didn't notice yesterday, especially across western and southwestern Oklahoma. And, and of course, these are just where the uh, winds happen to intersect a mesonet station. And there was plenty of, of damaging winds up here. 121 miles per hour is what we estimated on radar uh, down here in southwest Oklahoma near Tipton last night. Now today, uh, the winds aren't as bad. We've had some 60s out here in the west. And there's some 40s and 50s to near 60 here in Oklahoma. Um, kind of the city area, this is Cleveland County, right around, oh, say from Tuttle to, to Moore, Norman, kind of in that little stretch. Some nice strong winds last night around, what, 2 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And as we looked, again, rainfall amounts elsewhere over the state. Not so much out across eastern Oklahoma, but definitely some uh, high amounts out here to the west uh, with some isolated spots up there getting quite excessive. So the storm prediction outlook does have a severe weather risk here for us across the southern half of Oklahoma. 
The tornado aspect of it is confined down here into Texas, so it's not so much of a big deal for us today. Wind and hail, though, is still on the ticket. If you do look here, the uh, close-up view does show the southern, mm, southern third for the slight and the southern half for marginal, up to golf ball size hail and winds up to maybe 80 miles per hour. So not quite as volatile as yesterday, but still enough to kind of get your attention. Southeast Oklahoma also under the gun for a little bit of severe weather today. Same idea, a little bit of wind, a little bit of hail, no big deal. All right, so out there currently, the mesonet is a mess as far as trying to find the residual front that was around the state yesterday. We have a lot of outflow boundaries in place, um, and those will be the basically a new front, kind of a, because it's a convergence line. You've got colder air to the north and warmer air to the south. So if I were to kind of show you the one down here, and this is a very quick drawing estimation, kind of give you an idea. You have uh, north winds on this side of this little boundary, uh, and you have south winds out on this side of the boundary. So this will be where you more than likely have a better shot at seeing some severe weather. Again, that's why that uh, slight risk was kind of pushed down to the southern third, closer to this boundary. And it depends on how things can recover in this zone as to whether or not we get the south winds back in this part of the state. But looking good up here in northwest Oklahoma and, and northeast for anything like that when it comes to, um, you know, wind or anything like that for these stronger storms. All right, let's see. Satellite view shows a nice cluster of storms moving through the state from west to east. You can see that puts the brakes on down here around Lawton, but again, we'll have more development down here in southern Oklahoma for that. All right, so let's jump into the forecast element, I believe, because that kind of gets you up to date on the latest conditions. All right, so we'll do this guy here. All right, so this is on the... Um, our short-term high resolution model. So it does somewhat indicate the storms moving through here at noon. It's a little late, then not quite as bullish as what's actually happening, but it's close enough. As we head to two, three o'clock in the afternoon, you do see a little bit of a break here uh, for Oklahoma City, but you do see more storms developing out to the west uh, in west central Oklahoma. And then you see more storms bubbling up by five and six o'clock there in southern Oklahoma. And then we'll still have some of those move into central Oklahoma around the Oklahoma City Metro. But again, for the severe weather aspect, probably mainly confined down south closer to the Red River. And then you have more storms that will develop overnight. Here's 11 o'clock. Here's midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. So another late night with some thunder rolling through. Again, pockets of wind and hail. But the severe weather threat should be a lot less in magnitude. So but some good heavy rainfall, though, for southern and southeastern Oklahoma by thirdly Thursday morning. Then, little stragglers of some showers here for Thursday morning. That finally moves off. And then, would you believe this? It just doesn't want to stop raining. So, Thursday afternoon, another little light batch of showers that moves through here in central Oklahoma. And then, finally, we have another system showing up in the data for Friday morning. Uh, the cluster of storms that may graze the southwestern third or southwestern fourth of the state. So that would be some more heavy rain over that area. Uh, if I were to take a look just at this particular model only, just to see uh, the rainfall amounts um, that would come out of this as far as its prediction, just kind of give you an idea of, of potential that's on the table. Oh, let's see here. So we're looking at another widespread one to two to maybe three inches of rain um, over some of these areas. So. Again, if you've been hit with some flooding, you might get hit again with some more before all is said and done. I know it's a lot to deal with, right? Uh, let's see, here's another view. This, this model is a bit more um, aggressive, but I wanna show you this uh, spot here for Friday. So this is how it comes in for Friday. So same idea, the southwestern, this one has the southwestern half of the state mostly, but some good heavy rainfall. Um, basically we kinda call it an MCS type deal. So that's what we have for you there. Now it's time to give you the old forecast here for the remainder of today. So we'll load this thing up here. All right, so for the rest of today, we'll be in the 70s across a good chunk of the state. Really, of course, much colder north and west. Um, you're deeper in the colder air. And then we've got some mid 70s on Friday. So Friday's actually looking pretty decent. Saturday and Sunday, we start to warm things up back up to around 90 for Monday, Tuesday, then back in the 80s after that. Overnight lows getting closer to 70. So you know what that means. If you've got lows around 70 and daytime highs in the 80s, mid 80s, it's sticky, right? It's going to be going to be that Houston weather. <laughs> it's like when you walk outside, breathing, you're like, ugh. 
I can't buddy breathe in this thing. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of that here. All right. Well, that's it for me here for today. I hope that was helpful. So bottom line is, you know, off and on, scattered showers, thunderstorms continue through the period here into th early Thursday morning. Um, and some heavy rainfall, a little bit of wind, a little bit of hail, especially in the south uh, parts of the state. Um, and then temperature a little bit cooler as a result. No tornado threat looks like right now, so that's good. Um, that would definitely be a freak thing to happen. Um, and the magnitude of a severe weather is not as great as it was yesterday. So those are all some good news. So that's what I've got here for you. We'll have uh, more info later. But meanwhile, hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Happy hump day, and we'll talk again soon. Take care.